Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Uh, I'm here sipping on a soda, trying to wake up my Friday night voice this Saturday morning. Bear with me. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Right? Let's talk about Yorkie Scamboa and Terence Crawford. This is post weigh in. Right? Let me say this. I made an earlier video, and many people here online disagreed with me about my characterization of Yorkie Gamboa's style. I'm sticking to it. Right? Um, win, lose, or draw. One constant is. I'm pretty ignorant about some things and pretty persistent. Let's just say this. I don't believe Yorkie Scamboa, with fast hands and with great power, is a chess player up close. I don't believe Yorkie Scamboa can stay in the pocket and deconstruct you. I don't. I understand he is an Olympic gold medalist. I understand he's an unbeaten fighter. I understand he is a former belt holder right all of that is true but I believe he's done it on the strength of his legs and his timing I believe he is a almost pure ambush fighter in other words we'll compare and contrast him to Joe Fraser another guy who was a little bit shorter earlier era Joe Fraser lived in the pocket Joe Fraser was a stalker. He was cutting distance, right? His idea of fighting you was to get close to you, even if you were a home run hitter like Bob Foster, right? Joe Fraser would try to get close to you and land a left hook, right? So he would bob and weave his way in to get close to you to land a left hook. He's cutting distance. Yorkie Scamboa is different. Yorkie Scamboa is not living in the pocket. He's trying to stay outside of the pocket. Let's be clear on what an ambush fighter is. I believe Gamboa is staying outside of the pocket. Then he's trying to jump into the pocket with power shots. Right? It throws off technicians because they're accustomed to dealing with someone in the pocket and then trying to deconstruct what they're doing. Right? Their construct is that you're sitting at the chess table with them playing chess. They don't know how to handle a guy who's outside of the chess table. Then he comes in with power shots. If you can lead with power shots, that doesn't give a counterpuncher enough time to figure out the angles. While that counterpuncher is wondering where that left is going to come, from right and is trying to read it an ambush fighter won't give you anything to read before the blitzkrieg now what we saw in my opinion in the first round of the Miguel Cotto Sergio Martinez fight because Martinez is a bit of an ambush fighter was an ambush fighter after a long layoff unable to read distance. I understand Martinez had injuries. I know many of you believe that that knee gave out in the first round, right? But what was interesting was that Martinez didn't have timing, right? He couldn't cope with Cotto patiently waiting, then coming in with big punches. Martinez wasn't ready for it, nor was Martinez able to mount much of an offense. I believe that ambush fighters fit an entire profile. I don't believe they fight three minutes of every round, right? The nature of their style to me is that they're episodic, not constant like Joe Fraser. They're episodic. Right? So I don't believe they fight three minutes of every round. And that's when they're in the ring on a regular basis. You could imagine 
that if an ambush fighter has been outside of the ring for more than a year, then I would question their stamina even more. Right? Yorkies Gamboa has been out of the ring for more than a year. I question his stamina in this fight. That's the first thing. Right? The second thing is I believe, just like with Sergio Martinez, that ring rust accumulates faster on ambush fighters than it does stalkers. Right? Joe Fraser wasn't standing around waiting for an entry point. He's trying to create an entry point. Think Earl Campbell in the NFL. Right? Ambush fighters, by contrast, have to gauge distance because they're traveling from outside the pocket into the pocket. And the timing has to be crisp and surprising enough that they're able to hit defensive fighters who are in the pocket. The ambush doesn't work unless there's an element of surprise. The ambush doesn't work unless you're accurate. Who cares about your surprise attack if you jump in and your timing is off to the point where your punches either don't have snap. In other words, it's an ambush, but then I get hit with your shot and there's nothing on it. Or if you're inaccurate. You surprise me, you jump in, but guess what? The shot sails by. If your timing's off, it's over. I don't expect Yorkie Scamboa's timing to be there. He's been out of the ring too long. Also, Yorkie Scamboa is gaining weight. This isn't the Yorkies Gamboa fighting at 126 or whatever. This fight's at 135. Don't just pay attention to the height gap. Crawford's much taller than Gamboa. But you need to also pay attention to the weight classification. Does Gamboa still hit like Gamboa at 135 pounds? How big is this ambush going to be? Is it going to be the kind of ambush where he jumps in, suddenly he's up on you, and he's throwing the kind of punches that can drop you? Or is this going to be more of the nuisance ambush? You're in a gunfight and a guy gets up on you, hits you a couple of times, but you're still there. Look closely at the Ricky Burns, Terrence Crawford fight. You're going to see... Some interesting things. Now let me say this about Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns is a slick customer with above average defense. Right? But yet, Terrence Crawford is landing a jab. How do you beat an ambush fighter? In my opinion, you follow him after the ambush. What's the best way to do that if you're a defensively oriented fighter? It's with a jab. A jab can keep an opponent busy. You keep an ambush fighter preoccupied between ambushes. And he might not be composed enough to do the ambushes. Crawford has an excellent jab. Let's get deeper on Crawford. Crawford has an excellent left hook. Crawford is ambidextrous. So let's say Crawford comes out. And also, think hard on Crawford. Fights at 135, Crawford's fought above 140 before. Right? Think about it. Crawford's going to view Gamboa as a guy with limited experience at 135 pounds. Right? Limited experience who's a smaller man. So let's say Crawford comes forward. Crawford's ability to throw the left hook is important here because Crawford could keep Gamboa busy with the left jab. 
right? Crawford has a very good jab. Then, without opening himself up, while still in a defensive stance, while defending the right side of his body, right? Crawford can throw a left hook. Gamboa's been down in his career multiple times, right? Multiple times. So I like Terrence Crawford in this fight. I think he's the fighter with less ring rust, right? He's been fighting fights. Gamboa has been out of the ring. Crawford is a guy who is mentally tough. He beat Ricky Burns in Scotland. Look at the scorecards. He beats Ricky Burns by several rounds. Compare and contrast that to the fight Burns had yesterday where Burns barely lost it on the scorecards. They love Ricky Burns in Scotland. Just ask Ray Beltran. Very hard to beat Ricky there. Terrence Crawford did it on all three judges' scorecards by numerous rounds. More importantly, you know, Crawford, as an amateur, beat Danny Garcia. Crawford, as an amateur, beat Mikey Garcia. Who exactly is Terrence Crawford? Think about it. Terrence Crawford is 26 years old. 26. Crawford even has the age in his favor. Because Gamboa is in his 30s. Also, think about the electricity that's going to take place in Nebraska. Did I forget to mention that this fight is happening in Crawford's backyard? Crawford is the first boxing champion. I'm sure Nebraska's had many champions, including championship Cornhusker football. But Crawford's the first professional boxing champion in several generations in Nebraska. According to some records, some reports say the last world champion from Nebraska was some guy who held a belt in 1914. This is going to be a spotlight shown on a part of the country ready for their moment on HBO. The electricity in the arena is going to be palpable. If Crawford is in the area code of a decision, I believe Crawford's going to get the decision. And I'm expecting Crawford to be well within the area code. In fact, Crawford, to me, has an opportunity at a stoppage. Let me say this, and I know I'm blurring divisions, I know I'm blurring fighters, but it's all about the styles. A very interesting fight to look at is David Hay, an ambush fighter, against um, Derek Chisora, a stalker. I know I'll agree Crawford's not a stalker, although he can be one. I've been reading here online about how Crawford's always safety first and stuff like that. How then does Crawford have the same KO percentage as Yorkie Gamboa? Crawford has an identical number of KOs. Right? Crawford can stalk you. Wasn't that Ricky Burns up on the ropes against Crawford? Wasn't that Terrence Crawford going for the stoppage? Not the decision, but the stoppage in the 12th round of the Ricky Burns fight. Right? Well, in that David Hay, Derek Chisora fight, keep in mind, Hay wins the fight. But also keep in mind, as I've said here, and I know it's controversial, David Hay is one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. And he's a heavyweight. Right? He delivers on the nickname Haymaker. Well, just understand, in that fight, and I want people to revisit that fight, don't look at the final result, even I'll concede David Hay wins by knockout. 
Okay, fair enough. But what I want you to do is to look at how tired David Hay is. Look at David Hay's body. David Hay's in shape. He's not at the buffet table. This is a guy who takes care of himself. But Derek Chisora forced him to fight. Now, Chisora isn't Terrence Crawford. Crawford can do it behind a jab. Right? He can keep you busy with the jab and left hooks. Right? Derek Chisora was trying to Joe Fraser David Hay. Right? He's on his front foot throughout. But the key is David Hay is tired. In fact, think about that fight. They made that fight a 10 rounder. I know that wasn't Derek Chisora's idea. Right? Derek Chisora went 12 rounds with Vitaly Klitschko. Right, so David Hay understood that as an ambush fighter who was going to be pursued, he was going to be tiring because unlike hoverers and unlike stalkers, ambush fighters aren't ready to fight 12 rounds. They're not ready to fight three minutes of every round. They're not, right? We might not notice it when a David Hay fights someone like a Valuev, who, you know, is barely active in the fight. Or someone like a Vladimir Klitschko, who, you know, was content to let David Hay stay away, knowing that Hay had to do something to take his title, right? But, um, you know, you do notice it in fights where Bernard Hopkins, Jean Pascal, right, where a guy... Hopkins, the old man, is literally coming forward on Jean Pascal. And Pascal's bone tired later in the fight. So you're telling me that Yorkies Gamboa is older, much older, in boxing years, right? Much older than Terence Crawford. You're telling me that he's operating at a reach disadvantage. Crawford's a taller man, right? Who can pump a jab. You're telling me that he is the less active fighter. Hasn't fought in over a year. Before that, fought, I believe, once in 2013, once in 2012. You're telling me that Gamboa is the guy with the greater amount of ring rust. And you're telling me that this fight is taking place in Crawford's backyard? You add all of that up, and I'm expecting Gamboa to be given his first loss. I like Crawford in the fight. Let me just say, I would hedge the play. Right? I would hedge the play with Gamboa by KO. Because that's what ambush fighters do. Understand, to be an ambush fighter, you have to have big-time power one punch power in both hands right that's what Sergio Martinez has Martinez is a bigger puncher than people seem to realize that's what John Pascal has that's who David Hay is that's who Yorkie Gamboa is but if the Gamboa in my opinion doesn't get the KO he loses the fight by several rounds let me just say two if you break an ambush fighter, I don't care how good the guy looks. If you force him to fight three minutes of every round, some of these ambush fighters end up hitting the deck. Take a look at how tired David Hay was at the end of the Carl Thompson fight, which Hay lost. Wasn't that John Pascal? on the canvas in the rematch of the Bernard Hopkins rematch, right? Um, all I'm saying is if Crawford comes out and lands that left jab, a jab provides you with more safety than a hook. You're a little bit more committed with the hook. If Crawford comes out and lands that left jab, Right, then starts to land the hook behind it. 
and it's forcing Gamboa to fight three minutes of every round. I don't see how Gamboa makes it through the fight. I don't. Why? Because in my opinion, he's an ambush fighter. If you believe he's a stalker like Joe Fraser or a stay-in-the-pocket type guy, Floyd Mayweather, right then? Okay, fine. I don't believe Gamboa is Mayweather. Right? I think Mayweather is a guy who can pivot on his front leg and who can stand right in front of you and make you miss. I believe when Gamboa stands right in front of you, he gets hit. Understand, guys who fight in the pocket are different than guys outside the pocket. Guys who stay in the pocket, right, they're relying on, you know, game, not surprise. I believe Gamboa is relying a lot on an element of surprise. Since he's been inactive, that surprise, to me, he's going to be rusty in trying to unveil the Halloween costume. Right? It's going to be more of, you know, let's just say the trick part of the trick-or-treat equation isn't going to be there. Also, when Gamboa lands, one has to wonder if Terrence Crawford, who has beaten Danny Garcia, is going to be impressed with the punching power at this weight. Let me hear from you. I expect Crawford to win the fight. From a gambling perspective, just for protection, I'll hedge the play with Gamboa by KO. Let us all know how you see it here in the comment section to this video, and let's discuss it. Thanks for stopping by.